Our special today is coho salmon. Sounds on disgusting. Do you have chicken fingers? With their crispy chicken fingers and iconic sauce, no one does it quite like Raising Cane's. But there's still so much to learn about the chain. So let's check out 10 things you absolutely need to know about Raising Cane's chicken fingers. What? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. More than one hack. Oh, I take Skittles and I put it between two Starbursts. Raising Cane's is pretty much delicious no matter what you order, but there's more than one way to elevate your meal, all the while getting the best bang for your buck. That is, as long as you don't mind a little DIY. As most of you know, Raising Cane's offers many combos, which are already a pretty good deal, but by ordering the box combo, you could get more than you bargained for. Shut up and take my money! The box includes four chicken fingers, crinkle-cut fries, Texas toast, cold slaw and Kane's famous sauce. Not too long ago, a TikTok went viral after it exposed the ultimate hack to make your own crispy chicken finger sandwich, all with this seemingly ordinary box. User Food with Bros shared how instead of dipping his chicken fingers in the sauce like usual, he slices the Texas toast in half and stuffs everything in between. The word quickly got out, and many more popular internet personalities started trying all kinds of different versions of the hacked sandwich. And if you already knew that one, try this one if you can't get enough of the tasty sauce. <laughs> yeah, boy. Say yes to the sauce. The sauce. Oh, my on The sauce. Continue. At most fast food restaurants, the dipping sauce is optional. You don't actually need it to make your meal enjoyable, but it's always a nice addition. At Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, however, you simply must have the sauce. There's no way around it. The sauce is basically half of the meal. That's because the chicken fingers are meant to be dipped. They're specifically lightly seasoned, and it's up to the sauce to give them that kick of spice and tang. So to get the best Raising Cane's experience possible, don't skip on the sauce and don't be shy to ask for extra. It's more than worth it. Trust me when I say this. Now, since we've established that the sauce is an integral part of the chain, let's talk about how you can make your own at home. Yes, the official recipe is technically top secret, and only loyal, sworn to secret select few managers know it, but not all hope is lost. The internet is a wonderful place filled with wonderful copycat recipes that come surprisingly close to the real deal, and it's actually pretty easy to make. Make. The creamy coral colored sauce, described as tangy with a bit of heat, only requires a few ingredients, and chances are you already have them all in your kitchen. All you need is five ingredients mayonnaise, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, black pepper, and garlic salt. As long as it's pink and peppery, you've done it right. Perfect. The original Raising Cane mascot. Wouldn't he be a great mascot? Speaking of Todd's cute dog who would always pay visits to the construction site, the Yellow Lab did way more than give his name to the chain. He also became the official mascot. The original Kane and Raising Kane's namesake was a friendly pup who apparently loved to be around people and would wear all kinds of things, including Todd's sunglasses. When he eventually passed away in 1998, Graves' wife gave her husband and the rest of the fandom the ultimate Christmas gift, a new Labrador puppy. Named Raising Cane 2, she became the new mascot of the chain. But that's not all the good work she did. She also became a certified pet therapy dog and would regularly visit children's hospitals and provide therapeutic care at hospitals around the country. Very double noise. She was also a fixture at the restaurant support office and community events for years until she died in 2016. After this long reign, Raising Cane 3 soon followed and is continuing the legacy. She made her grand debut at Louisiana's Washington Mardi Gras in 2018 in true Lion King fashion. If you're interested in following the adventures of this cute little puppy, you can head over to Instagram. As we keep moving on, take a second to hit that like button, would ya? Now, let's keep going. Let's roll. Lemonade is a big deal. What are you selling? Lemonade! If you ever go to Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, there's only one drink you need to wash down all of your meal, and that's their signature lemonade. Nothing can beat the freshly squeezed lemonade made daily and sweetened with cane sugar. Not only is it surprisingly refreshing and not overly sweet, which is the perfect balance to have, but it's also a pretty big deal at the chain. Oh, it's so fresh. Nothing better than when they're fresh. 
not so dire. Since community involvement is extremely important to everyone at Raising Cane's, in the summer of 2019, the chain hosted a Lemonade with a Cop event in Arizona. People could enjoy live music, chicken fingers, a bunch of Cane's prizes, and of course, free lemonade. They could also chat with cops and meet cute rescue dogs at the same time. There's also the Lemonade Day program, which teaches kids very important life skills, like how to start, own, and operate their own business. In this case, a lemonade stand. Hi, sell lemonade, huh? Yep. Good for you. It almost had a different name. Well, we could still be a band and choose a different name. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers is already a pretty peculiar and uncommon name for a fast food chain, but as it turns out, it was almost given an even more bizarre moniker, Sockeye's Chicken Fingers. What? what we know what you're thinking. Isn't Sockeye a type of fish? Why would he want to name his chicken restaurant after a salmon? Well, the answer is pretty simple, really. Sockeye salmon is part of the reason why the chain was started in the first place. Indeed, when Todd Graves set off to go make his own money in order to open his restaurant, he had to do multiple hands-on blue-collar jobs, including 90-hour weeks as a boiler maker in oil refineries. But it was when he landed a job in the risky trade of commercial salmon fishing in Alaska that his luck really turned for the better. He would spend 20 hours a day on a boat fishing commercially for sockeye salmon in very dangerous conditions. But at the end of the day, it allowed him to save enough money to come back from his temporary move and get his loan to open his restaurant. So Todd planned to name the eatery after the fish he had spent so long fishing. But luckily, a friend intervened and suggested he name it after his yellow Labrador retreat raising cane. Good for them. Awards after awards. Who's excited about award season? While there are many good things served at Raising Cane's, the chain has always specialized in one thing and one thing only, chicken fingers. And even though at first people didn't want to believe that a restaurant serving only one thing could possibly be successful, they were quickly proven completely wrong. The carefully marinated chicken breasts, hand-battered and fried in canola oil, have gathered quite the following all around the world, even invading Popeye's turf. So much so that the loyal fans even have a name now, the Caniacs. Obviously, such deliciousness, prosperity, and devotion shouldn't go unnoticed, and that's exactly why Raising Cane's has won countless awards over the years. <laughs> you know what this calls for? What's that? Foot slap! The founder, the franchise, and the food have all won awards, including Best Chicken Tenders from the Fasties, a new annual fast food awards show started and hosted by Thrillist. Its dipping sauce was also recognized, ranking third in the Best Dipping Sauce category. But the restaurant didn't get to where it is all on its own. The Caniacs helped big time, and for this, the chain was recognized as having the most loyal guests in the fast casual segment and technology. 2018 Consumers Choice Awards. Not bad. Not bad. The Optimal Hours. I think I'll be safe if I get to the airport five hours early. Five? No way. You gotta do seven. Everyone knows that when a restaurant is as good as Raising Cane's, there is inevitably going to be a line at some point, and a long one. Even though it's called a fast food chain, if there's a bunch of cars in front of you, it gets to a point where fast doesn't really cut it anymore. Well, that's unless you know exactly when to go and how to avoid having to wait around for your food. Yep, there's always a way to bypass the annoying parts of ordering, and planning ahead is a good start. Obviously, this particular tip won't apply to every location, but it should hold true for the majority. If you want the best chance at getting your food quickly, forget weekend visits and opt for a weekday meal. On weekends, most restaurants are usually quite busy from opening until closing, and avid fans of the chain know how long the lines can be. Jeez, look at this line. Yeah, no kidding, and it's not moving. As for the time, you should preferably go a little before lunch hour, so around 11 a.m. That way, you're right on time for lunch without having to deal with all the other hungry customers. According to regulars, during the week, the wait time is between 5 and 10 minutes. And if you want to skip the line altogether, your best option would be to call the restaurant or go on the website and order ahead so that all you have to do is swing by, pick it up, and bring it home. That's it. And then? No and then. I, I, that's, that's all I want. There's merch. Oh. 
No touching the merchandise. One of the best ways to advertise your brand, whether it's a restaurant or a store, is to have merchandise with your logo on it. Raising Cane's understood that and is now selling its own line of apparel online for very reasonable prices. And the best part is, it's actually good quality material, so you shouldn't feel guilty about spending any of your hard-earned cash. Sounds good to me. You've got the classic t-shirts and hoodies with the chain's name and logo, as well as a bunch of caps with options for everyone. There are trucker hats, vintage hats, and performance hats, so you can be sure to find one that's going to match your look. And there are even baby onesies and bibs for those future little caniacs out there who are bound to fall in love with the chain. And when you see just how cute these are, you'll see that this is more than a reasonable price. If you stray from the beaten track and search online, Online, you'll find tons of bootleg Raising Cane merch like plush toys. But if you want the real, authentic stuff, then visit the official website and support the chain at the same time. It is the best. Humble Beginnings. From his humble beginnings as a stay standing. Raising Cane's chicken fingers first began as a college dream, but not just any dream, one that seemed doomed right from the start. It was young entrepreneur Todd Graves who, thanks to his determination and perseverance, founded the company back in 1996 in Louisiana. Todd had a vision of a restaurant serving the highest quality chicken finger meals and nothing else. Cuckoo ka cha! So he created a business plan with his business partner, Craig Sylvie, while attending Louisiana State University. Ironically enough, that plan was used as a school project and ended up receiving the worst grade in the class after the professor said a restaurant serving only chicken fingers could never work. Instead of letting this bad mark discourage him, Todd rolled up his sleeves and presented his business plan to any banker that would see him, who all told him he should let go of his idea. Idea. However, as we can now see today, negative feedback didn't get to him, and after working tirelessly and saving his money, Todd was able to obtain a loan and get started on the reconstruction of an old building, which would later become the first Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers location. And the rest was history. Giving back during the pandemic. Ah, very nice. During this pandemic, a lot of businesses, big or small, struggled to stay afloat and keep their employees happy and employed. The solution for many fast food joints was to close down locations and fire a good amount of employees in order to cut costs and make as much profit as possible. Oh my god. They, they just forgot to unlock the door, that's all. However, Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers had a very different approach. It decided to not only help its employees, but the community as well. It only shut down a few dozen of their locations, and only 33 locations without a drive through were temporarily closed. Todd Graves was not on board with the idea of laying off any of his 23,000 employees, so he did everything to keep as many people as he could. In fact, the chain ended up hiring 5,000 new crew members and distributed $2 million to current employees to make up for the reduced hours due to the pandemic. As for the community, a location in downtown Baton Rouge stopped serving chicken fingers and turned the restaurant into a mask-making operation where workers volunteered to make face masks, which added up to about 100 masks per day. Raising Cane's then donated about 1,000 masks to Our Lady of the Lake Children's Hospital and another 1,000 to New Orleans healthcare workers. That's a beautiful gesture. Get a taste of more great videos. Just tap or click, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.